This is solvable. What kind of time frame? If the money were made available today, let's say if the Federal Reserve actually wanted to solve this problem, and they went into their little computer, and they typed in some digits and created another trillion dollars, like they did every time they wanted to bail out Wall Street, uh, if that money were available, what are we talking in terms of total cleanup? Like 10 weeks? Longer? Six months? What, what's the, what do you think it is? You just have to fabricate the containers, and it would probably take a year or two to to fabricate enough containers. So, you know, certainly within three years, it's solvable. And and it doesn't even take an act of Congress or the Federal Reserve. It just takes the Nuclear Regulatory Commission saying, do it. But uh, even, okay, if you say two or three years to create these containers, uh, but in that time frame then, between now and the time that this is solved, uh, an earthquake, uh, you said a 7 or a 7.5 magnitude earthquake with an epicenter uh, near Fukushima, could bring this pool down before the problem is solved and, and thereby un unleash this massive amount of radiation. It seems like we are at risk for this time period. And, and the government has, the, the NRC hasn't even announced that it's going to take these steps to solve it. So we could be facing this risk for a decade, couldn't we? Well, we've got, yeah, there's two, two questions there. One, I, I, what I was talking about is in the U.S., we could solve this in three years and just pray there's no earthquake. Um, you know, in Fukushima, I was on I was on Chris Martinson a year ago, and I, I explained how you could solve this problem, which was to build a building outside the building to lift the nuclear fuel out. And just last week, Tokyo Electric said, you know, we're going to build a building around the building. <laughs> they, they are taking way too long to solve this problem because of exactly the concerns that, you know, another earthquake could come. But it, So it seems like we are being smothered by red tape here. We are... It's, it's like humanity is hanging on the edge of a cliff by our fingernails, figuratively speaking. This radiation of, of release could happen at any moment if, if Mother Nature, if an earthquake takes place. And yet governments everywhere, Japan and the U.S. in particular, are dragging their feet on this and, and doing nothing. They're not taking responsibility. They're not, even, they're not even serving the interests of the people that they claim to represent. This, this is pathetic. This is sad because it's a case of almost another you know, you know demo side death by government if the worst case happens well i think it's you know death by the nuclear industry deeply infused into government you know this is a uh, you know the the regulator the japanese have a great word for it that when when um, people uh, working for the regulator go to work at a high level and well paying jobs at the utility uh, they call it ascent into heaven um, so there's this <laughs> Oh, yeah. This is coziness, and it's with the, the IAEA, uh, who I've seen papers say that they're a watchdog. In fact, Article 2 of their charter says their goal is to promote nuclear power. So the industry and the government are essentially one no matter where you go. The, the Prime Minister of Japan now was the finance minister during the accident, and one of his emails surfaced about, uh, oh, about a month ago, and it said it was from three weeks after the accident, and he said, whatever you do, do not affect TEPCO. So, wow. you know, they've been more interested in protecting TEPCO and, and their own bureaucratic butts than they have been about protecting the people of Japan. Well, what's new? And what, what government body or department doesn't want to cover its own butt? Or, in, in, hey, in the case of uh, the ATF or the DEA in America, they actually uh, uh, create problems so they get bigger budgets and, and become more powerful. The CDC did that. The FBI does that, running these false uh, terror events, but that's, that's a different topic. Let me ask you this. Um, I noticed that the, uh, the general public it has a very poor understanding of what I would call relative risk. Um, I was trained as, uh, uh, in a scientific way as an engineer, very strong background in mathematics, and I often think about uh, the relative risk of events, a lot of people are concerned about, let's say, Yellowstone exploding. Well, that happens once every 600,000 years. Or they're, they're concerned about a comet or an asteroid hitting the planet. That's possible. But in terms of relative risk, the Fukushima event is, is here now. It is, it is orders of magnitude more likely than many of these other concerns that tend to dominate people's psychological focus. Can you speak to this issue of relative risk and having a, an appropriate perception of what risks really exist? Uh, yeah, I, I have a saying, uh, sooner or later in any foolproof system, the fools are going to exceed the proofs. 
And I, I think that um, we fooled ourselves at Fukushima, we as, a, as the world. And, and all, essentially, this, this concept is for any reactor, but let's look at Fukushima. You know, we knew we could build a power plant that could withstand a, a, a Richter 7 and a, a, a 3 meter, a 9 foot tsunami, so that's what we built. And um, we fooled ourselves into thinking that that's what Mother Nature was going to give us, a, a seven Richter, three foot, uh, a three meter tsunami. Um, the economics to build a plant to withstand a Richter eight or a, a, a 60 foot tsunami would have made it so you wouldn't have built that nuclear plant. You couldn't have afforded it to build that nuclear plant. So I think that in the back of the people's minds who are advocates of the technology, they convince themselves that Mother Nature is going to be benign. So, <laughs> yeah, go ahead. No, I'm just laughing. Keep going that because they're they're so they're so wrong. Mother Nature always gives you it, it hands you something that's completely unanticipated. In fact, you cannot even imagine the human mind. Even even a brilliant nuclear engineer, nuclear physicist, cannot accurately anticipate the the unexpected nature of Mother Nature. Yeah, you know, my, my journey has been from, you know, pro-nuclear, senior vice president, and then I got to the point when I blew the whistle and the Nuclear Regulatory Commission took bribes and deliberately botched the inspection. I still believed in the technology, but I didn't believe in government. And now, the, you know, the Fukushima accident has pushed me over, and, and I'm at a point where, just like what you said, I don't believe that mankind can build something strong enough that Mother Nature can't knock it down. And... Considering the consequences, you know, it's not just the risk. The, the, if it was, you know, one person getting knocked over a tsunami, that's one thing. But the risk of this um, and, and the consequences. Yeah, the yeah, it has to be risk versus consequences because that, that's the other side of the equation. Yeah, you know, Gorbachev said that uh, in his memoir, so this is a smart guy, he's been around a while, he said that it wasn't perestroika that ruined the, um, the Soviet Union, it was Chernobyl. Hmm. I think we're seeing the same thing here with Fukushima. This is going to be a half a trillion or more dollars, and that works out to be about $4,000 for every man, woman, and child in Japan. And uh, it's going to bring that country to its knees. Do, is, do we want a technology that can be perfect for 40 years and then have one bad day? In and wipe you out. Very good question, Arnie Gutterson. We're almost out of time. I want to encourage people to visit your website, fairwinds.com. And, and Arnie, any any final thoughts you want to add in the in the next thirty seconds as yeah, we round this up? Just real quick. You know, we've been uh, we've been told that nuclear is safe and we can store the nuclear waste for a quarter of a million years. Uh, but those same people are saying we can't use solar because we can't store the solar electricity overnight. And that doesn't make sense to me. If we can develop a technology to store nuclear waste for a quarter of a million years, we can certainly develop batteries or something to store the sun overnight. Well said. Arnie Gunderson from Fairwinds.com. Thank you, Arnie, for...